All right, welcome all of you who are already logged in with us. It is two o'clock. That's when we want to get this webinar started. I'm going to give everybody just another minute or two, if everybody's okay with that, to give everybody a chance to get logged in um, before we get started so we can let everybody make sure they take advantage of, of everything we're going to talk about today. So I will be right back with everybody in about a minute. Okay, hey folks, going to go ahead and get started today. I know everybody's busy, 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 and it is a Friday at 2 p.m., so we'll go ahead and, and get started today. I want to, first off, welcome everybody to the AAMC First Webinar Series. My name is Jonathan Chancellor. I'm an Education Debt Management Specialist here with the team uh, in the Office of Student Financial Services. I'm joined by some of my colleagues today who are going to help me out um, with making sure that the, we have any questions and help me with anything of that nature. Um, but today, what we wanted to focus on is showing everybody our resident guide to money management and student loans. Um, this is a brand new publication that we put together. So we thought it would be a good time now that even graduate students are thinking about the transition to residency. Um, residents who are just now, like most of us, coming out of the payment pause from the COVID-19 relief measures, looking to what they need to do with student loans and finances. We thought it'd be a really good time to sort of try and showcase everybody what this resident guide actually has um, and what kind of resources are available to you. That being said, the format today is going to be a little bit different. So for any of you who sit in and listen to all of our first webinar series, you've probably noticed this year we're doing a little bit of different things. Uh, we're trying live demos like today. Uh, we're trying just Q&A sessions with experts on different topics um, and subjects. So we're really trying to spice it up a little bit for you. Um, give everybody something that can really, really, really be useful um, and also try to make them a little bit more interactive. So the format today is, is I'm going to show you some things in some slides, um, how to navigate to the resident guide and things of that nature, resources from the AMC. But then I'm also going to stop sharing slides and actually go to our website, walk you through how you can navigate through the section um, for residents that's in our guide to money management and student loans. While I'm doing that, if anybody has any questions or anything comes up about any of the information you're being shown on the screen uh, or something you may be okay with us talking about a little bit later, because we will make sure to answer all your questions before we end the, the show today, um, just be sure and put those questions in the chat. That's not going to bother me in any way, shape, or form, uh, and we'll just be sure that we could try to recognize those and get to those as we go along. So that's going to be our format today, some information on some slides, a live demo, um, and then sharing some resources for you. And of course, at the end, just making sure we answer all of your questions that you have about what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about finances during residency, right? Because that's really what this guide is going to help all of you do. As I mentioned earlier, whether you're a current medical student about to go into residency, you're in your last semester, the transition to residency is really where you're starting to get your focus, right? You're starting to look at things going on with your finances. Um, and, you know, this isn't just for you residents or medical students with loans. This is for any of you who have other financial questions, because when we highlight what we have in this new guide, and I'm going to call it the guide, a few times because it has a long title. But when I start to highlight what we have available for you, the guide, you're going to see that there's things in here for everybody. 
Uh, of course, it's going to have a big, big focus on student loans and, and repayment strategies, but there's also things in here about financial goals, um, setting up budgets and spending plans, and also just thinking about whether you're looking at these decisions and your finances, if it's just you, or maybe it's also a family. So there's a lot of things that we've included in this new resource that we hope is going to be very, very helpful for all of you. And again, we just thought it would be really, really good idea right now to go through this information with you, show you how it's structured on our website in this brand new publication. There's quite a few sections, and there's also a lot of information and detail in all of these sections that you're going to find in the guide. Um, we're going to start off with even giving you a checklist for your transition to residency, things you should be thinking about as you're in the process of that transition. Like I mentioned, we do have a lot of detail about student loans, whether it's organizing your loans, looking at a timeline. Big questions we are already getting now is consolidation, refinancing. Tell me what's going on with public service loan forgiveness. So all of these things and these details can be found in here. And as I mentioned, it's not just about loans. It's also about living on a residence stipend, um, something that you're going to have to get used to when you get into residency, knowing about credit cards, credit score, identity theft, things that you may not have thought about too much during medical school, but things you could start to think about now as you're transitioning into residency or if you're already in residency. Because again, student loans have been halted. Uh, finances are different when things like that are going on. Also going to show you how the guide highlights the importance and all of the great resources available in our financial wellness program. And we even have a section in the guide just talking about those additional next steps that you can take when it comes to residency, whether you're in it or you're transitioning into the program. What I wanted to do first for the first little bit is just really show you where to find this, right? Where can you find this great publication with all of this wonderful information? Well, you're going to first go to the WMC First homepage. This is how the landing page looks. This is sort of the first like top 50%, but we do have the guide to money management and student loans at the very, very top um, that you could see right here. I've already got a great question. I'm going to answer it right away. Yes, this new guide to money management and student loans is a replacement to what used to be called the Education Debt Manager. That was our EDM. This guide has not only all of the information that was contained in that, but much more. So yes, that's a good question. I'm glad somebody brought that up right at the beginning. I probably should have said that actually. So thank you for asking that question. So when you're looking for the guide, the first thing you'll do is again, go to our website. This is our homepage. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with FIRST, that's our financial information, resources, services, and tools through the AAMC. It's something that uh, we in the Office of Student Financial Services put together. Um, this is our homepage. So right at the top, one of the first resources you see you can click on is the Guide to Money Management and Student Loans. Once you're in there, you're going to see plenty of other things you could click on, and we can always go through these things with everybody. You're going to see things like entering medical school, continuing your education, graduating medical school. But when you do, you're also going to notice that what we're focused on today is the resident section, right? So we put all of these things in chronological order because it can help all of you out. Whoever's on this webinar, you may not be a resident. You may not be a graduating medical student. Um, you might be a financial aid administrator. Whoever you are, you're going to notice the layout um, and how we've structured it so that if there's things that are really important to you, and in this case, what we're doing today is if you're a resident or maybe even going into residency, these are the sections you want to click on because they're going to have information that really focuses on what's important to you. So you can see where there's a breakdown there. So when you go in and click on Guide to Money Management, this is going to be the page you see right off the bat. From there, you're going to see where you can see residency, right? And this is what we're going to click on. We're going to click on the residency tab. Then it's going to be a drop down. Under the residency tab, once you see that drop down, that's where it's going to show you all of the different sections that are available for you in residency. So I showed you what that looked like earlier in a single slide, but this is how it looks. These are links. Once you click on these individual links, this is what's going to come up. It's going to show you these different links and what is available inside each of those individual resources. Okay. So what I'm going to do real quick, and I'll ask my team to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Can we see, um, I might have to stop sharing real quick. This is why I wanna have my team on here. 
Okay, can everybody see the first website now? We can see it, Jonathan. Great, we're going, we're going strong, we're going strong. Let's make sure Jonathan keeps going. Thank you, Julie. Okay, so like I said, this is the first landing page. This is where you would originally, you're gonna first go to look at all of the available resources we have. And we're focused on the resident guide to money management. Clicking on the guide to money management, like I just showed you, now when you break it down, let me collapse that down. You could see, are you an entering medical school student, continuing your medical education, second year, third year, research year, whatever. Are you a graduating medical student or are you a resident? And you want to know what's important about residency. When you click the drop down on any of those, but in this particular case, residency, here are the different things that are available to you. Now I'm going to click just residency because obviously we want to let all of you know how important it is um, that when you're beginning your residency, you do start to think about finances. Um, these, it's an important aspect of your life. It's something new that a lot of you are going to be experiencing because you've been medical school students or if you're a current resident. Again, maybe you haven't had to worry about your student loan payment um, over the last few years. So now you're starting to think, how do I budget that in? Um, let me get a refresher course on what to do with these student loans because I am an, an, a resident at this particular point. So it just lets you know that the information in this guide can help you when it comes to, those could be challenges. We can call them challenges, that's okay because finances can be challenging. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna set you up to help answer as many questions as possible, provide as many resources as possible. The first section you're gonna notice in the residency section of this, the, the guide to money management is a checklist. So this checklist, the first thing it's gonna do is maybe give you something you might wanna print out. It's gonna tell you maybe you wanna organize your loan portfolio. You wanna, if you've got student loans, think about what loan repayment options are available. Create a monthly budget and spending plan. You could see all of the different things on there that we have looked at from research, from feedback, from the community, thinking these are some really high level important things to have on a checklist when it comes to your first year of residency. Or again, if you've been in residency and your finances are changes now, changing now to your student loans coming into factor. Also, just things about benefits, knowing about benefits and different changes with life and how you can get those squared away. You're also going to notice in each of these sections, we're going to have a lot of really, really helpful links that can help you along the way also, okay? So one of the first things we're, some, most of these pages will have a section called helpful links. This one, for example, managing your finances during residency. It's going to automatically take you to our section, students and residents, for managing your finances during residency. Here, you're going to see all sorts of different re resources that are going to be helpful to you whether it's the cost of applying for medical residency, residency and relocation loans. You could see things over on the side supporting the transition to residency. That's gonna be one of the first helpful links that is available to you. Maybe you're concerned about just the cost of applying to residency. We're gonna immediately take you there with this link to talk about the application cost. It's gonna show you a lot of different information about ARAS, residency fee calculator, um, we're going to talk to you about those things, um, talk to you about how to apply SMART for residency, talk to you about the matching program, the NRMP, um, match fees. There's so much information here about residency, the cost of residency, um, application fees, so many things that you can all see here. I'm trying to scroll very slowly, by the way, so I don't give anybody any headache when I'm going through this. Um, but that's going to be another helpful link that's available to all of you. Um, residency and relocation loans. This is something that some of you are considering um, because of, you know, different and unanticipated or anticipated expenses. It's not cheap to move anywhere right now. Rents are high pretty much everywhere. So you got to think about that. But we also give you some advice, right? We talk about how if you're thinking about another loan a residency or relocate relocation loan, you want to speak to your financial aid staff. You want to make sure that what the if you've exhausted resources that are available through them or not, um, reminding you that these loans are private loans. They are different than direct loans that you might have been used to having during medical school, like your unsub, your sub, or your plus loan. Um, so all of those things are going to be on there to help you out with that. 
I do have a couple of questions. So where can I find the living on a resident stipend infographic? <laughs> that's going to be showing here in a little bit as well. So we'll show you where that's going to come up and where you can find those fact sheets um, when we get to that section of budgeting and um, living on a resident stipend here in a little bit. Um, is the new fee assistance for NRMP in this version? These links are updated. So yeah, so we always make sure to link to either studentaid.gov, the NRMP, all of these links, we make sure they're, they're updated for any of the newer versions. So when you follow this, this guide and you use this publication, it should take you to the newest version of everything. We always do our best to keep up with that for sure. Um, so definitely, hopefully I answered those questions there. Um, but you'll see that. Um, as far as a link, and then also just another link, helpful link, transition to residency. This is going to take you to a section about a collaborative transformation um, to the residency programs, um, how the AAMC helps with this pro with this program, um, and the trans transition. And this is, again, a AAMC resource. So you also see when it goes here, you've got plenty of other resources that are going to be available to you if you want to know more about um, this particular portion of the guide, resources to residency programs um, and everything of that nature. So definitely take advantage of these helpful links when you see those shared uh, because they're definitely going to be there. All right. Um, I have a question that says, if we're about to enter residency, should we file taxes? <laughs> I've heard it's better uh, to for repayment. I can answer that for you, but give me one moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through sections on the residency on this guide that's going to give you advice about student loans and loan repayment. So that's what, we want, what we're trying to do. I'm glad you asked the question. We want you to see how the guide's laid out so that if you do have a question such as, should I file taxes if I'm about to become a resident for loan repayment? When we go into sections about organizing your student loans, consolidation, um, loan timelines, you're going to see a bunch of different links and resources that can help you answer that question. That is one that you definitely want to think about when it comes to student loans and repayments, right? Um, so we'll get to those too, I promise you that, because I do want to make sure everybody sees that when you have individual questions, all you do is go into the section that's pertaining to you. If you're a resident, going into residency, that's how this guide is laid out. So when you go into this checklist, if you're somebody who's concerned about that, that's what you'll click on. You don't have to click on right away credit cards, credit score, and identity theft. You want to know about that later, of course. But if your concern right now is filing taxes and student loan repayment, that's the section you go to. So I'm glad you asked that question. So hopefully we could show how that's laid out. So that's just the first page that we could see that, that shows how many important things there are as far as residency and your finances. And that's just your checklist. If you're someone with student loans, you could click on the organizing your student loan section. Right away, you can already see how we're starting to talk about the importance of our med loans organizer and calculator. You're going to have links to this where it could show you things you want to know about that. In addition to linking to our resources at the AAMC, you're going to notice things such as this. Managing your education debt, which we talk about is very, very important. When you click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to take you to studentaid.gov, the federal student aid website. It's going to do that because we also rely on them very, very heavily. This is this is the federal government's website. This is where you can find up-to-date information as well on student loans, student loan repayment, how to manage your student loans. All of those things are there for you whenever it comes to student loans. So we not only reference just AAMC resources, we also reference studentaid.gov because that is where it's at, right? This is where your loans are. This is who manages the student loan program. So you're going to notice a few links there as well um, throughout this presentation. So I'm going to move this down a little bit because my screen bar is moving. There we go. Um, so you'll notice, again, we have plenty of links to other reliable resources as well. We talk about the Med Loans Organizer and Calculator, how great that is for organizing your student loans. Then when we have an additional section, maybe resources, loan servicers, click on loan servicers. What are you going to see right out the gate? You're going to see we're taking you again to studentaid.gov. When you get to studentaid.gov, it's going to show you all of the loan servicers, how to identify your loan servicer. This is who's available right now through the Department of Education. So if you had a direct loan, this is where you're going to go. This is what your guide is going to do for you. It's also going to remind you that even though you might do exit counseling with your school. You have to do an official exit counseling with the Department of Education. We've got the link right here. 
I know your financial aid teams share that with you, and that's wonderful of them to do that. We're also just sort of helping to back them up when it comes to the exit counseling process. Because if you had a direct loan, you do have to do this too before your loans can technically go into repayments. Um, so you're going to see those links right off the bat in that second section. Um, let's see. Someone did ask about a recording of this webinar. We will post this recording on our first website. I'll try to remember to show you after I get done showing you the uh, the guide here. Uh, but on our first website on the homepage, you'll see recorded webinars and videos. So we'll do that about maybe about two weeks or so after this is done. Um, we'll get that posted for you. So that section is organizing your loans. Let's say you're concerned about a loan timeline. Like really, you know, what do you need to be doing with your loans, whether it's during residency, right? So during residency, we'll give you some advice on what you might want to think about as far as living on a realistic budget. Um, and then also knowing more about that budget, you also want to think about what are your repayment plans? That's a big question that we all have right now. What payment plans do we have? Click on this link. What do we do again? We link you to the Department of Education, studentaid.gov where you can see the most up-to-date information on payment plans, whether it's a fixed payment plan, whether it's an income-driven payment plan, this is where we want you to make sure you go. Or our website, we obviously keep our website up-to-date as well, but we're just letting you know that there are plenty of links to viable resources throughout this entire guide. So that would be one of the first things we'll think about when it comes to a loan timeline. We also give you information about your grace period. So some people don't realize you have a grace period after you graduate on your federal direct loans. This gives you information on that. It tells you what a grace period is and how you can learn more about it, how it could affect you. Maybe your timeline, your, your, your concern is before repayment begins, what should I be doing? So we talk about you need to think about what type of loan do you have? Is there a grace period? What's the disbursement date on those loans? Who's your servicer? There's so many different things to think about on that. We also make sure that you know that you have options for postponing your loan repayment. If you're a resident, you're going into residency, you do have that option. You could put your loans into forbearance. That's the important part about this particular section in the resident guide is a loan timeline. Everybody needs to know what that is. I myself am a calendar person. I like to put something on my calendar, give myself a good reminder that something's coming up. And that's a perfect way of doing it. Use this section for that. What if you're someone who goes to this guide and your concern is consolidation, refinancing, public service loan forgiveness? Well, look at that. We have a section for this too. If your concern or your questions revolve about consolidation, this link here is going to take you to the studentaid.gov and it's going to tell you what is a consolidated loan, right? What are the benefits of consolidating? What are the disadvantages? of consolidating. So it's gonna give you a link where you can look through all of that information on studentaid.gov. You can also look at the facts about consolidation before you're making this decision. You click on the link and here you go. You're looking at the AAMC's interpretation of those regulations where we talk about as well, what a consolidation loan is. What are the pros and cons of consolidation? Gives you links again to income driven plans, links to forgiveness, public service loan forgiveness talks about the pros and cons of consolidating. We even go in depth and show you how to consolidate. Once you're here, you can click on this link. It'll show you the application process, how you apply to consolidate your loan. Loans that can be consolidated. Somebody's always asking that. Can I consolidate a private loan? Can I consolidate a, a school loan? This lets you know it needs to be direct loans, subsidized, unsub. So all of the information is here for you if your question on consolidation is what you really wanna focus on. Now, oh, sorry, see, I'm glad I did this. <laughs> I clicked out of the wrong one, everybody. Sorry about that. But let's say your, your interest wasn't consolidating, but you're, you wanna know about refinancing. Here's some information about refinancing, understanding the full impact. Click on this link. Right away, it's gonna take you to these questions um, that we have put together on our resources. Should you refinance your loans? Ask yourself some questions. Ask yourself questions about interest rates. Um, ask yourself questions about, are you gonna be working in public service? Because that will affect whether or not you're eligible for PSLF, right? And guess what? There's information about PSLF. If you wanna know that, um, are the payments affordable? So you wanna think about that. We also, in these sections as well, 
refer you to IDR plans, uh, how to postpone payments, and also just thinking about risk in your financial life when it comes to refinancing. Most people know about the direct lending program, but refinancing is a question we get asked about a lot. So we have tons of information and resources available for you in this guide because it links you everywhere you need to go to what we have available, whether it's through the direct lending, for, through the AAMC, or even through studentaid.gov. Now, what if your question is about public service loan forgiveness? That is, of course, a big question that we're always getting asked, right? All you need to do is look in this guide. You see public service loan forgiveness in this section. Let's click on new rules. Maybe we're going to find out a little bit more about PSLF. Well, look where we took you right away. We took you back to studentaid.gov. We took you to the section on public service loan forgiveness. This is all going to show you how do you qualify, qualifying employment, what does full-time employment entail, which loans are eligible. We're taking you to their website so that you can see what PSLF is because it is a federal government program. So you want to know what it's like through the eyes of the federal government, right? So that's going to be in this section. That's a lot on loans, right? Now, I did also mention that there's plenty of you here I'm probably thinking maybe you don't have loans. Maybe your focus is more on living on a stipend. Go to the guide, click on residency, and we've got a section called living on a resident stipend. Right away, you're going to see we dive into budgeting, budgeting guidelines, um, looking at, you know, the cost of living by category. What do these things entail? You know, where does most of your expenses going to go? We give you advice on it. How you could do your first step is creating a budget. Second step is building a budget, um, being prepared for unexpected expenses. Once you look at something like that, we have links right here, expenses that may randomly occur. Well, unforeseen emergencies and financial needs. What do you do? This kind of gives you another set of advice from the AAMC on looking at if you're a medical student, you might have some options with your financial aid team, professional judgment, financial aid eligibility, professional judgment. So you're gonna wanna think about that if you're going into residency. You might be someone who's already in residency and something big like maybe a change in your family happens. Well, guess what? We even have a section on that. Getting married during medical school or residency. What does that do? What are the implications of that on your finances? We're gonna give you stuff about tax incentives. There's an IRS publication that you can link to where you can look at that. We're gonna show you what the changes are gonna be if you get married on repayment options with your student loans because every change in your household will affect your student loan payment. So we're gonna give you information on that. Uh, we have a fact sheet for repayment plans for student loans. There's other tips and strategies to consider just about repaying your loans, how you could be aggressive, um, reminding you about the interest accrual on these loans, so many different things. And there's also things to consider if you get married during medical school, um, which would be about FAFSA, how that might change a little bit if you get married and have, you have to include spouse's income dependence and different things like that. So again, depending on what you're really looking for, we're going to show you that. I think we have a few questions. Let me make sure about this. Um, so is there any information in the guide about how payments are applied? So yeah, I mean, what the guide has already done is it showed you to use the MedLoans Organizer and Calculator, right? So that's where you're going to use to look at your payments per month. Now, that would be a little bit of a separate webinar. I can't take too terribly much time uh, to dive into that too deeply. But what we do in the guide is show you when you're organizing your student loans. Remember this section here about organizing your student loans. That talks to you about the Med Loans Organizer and Calculator. That's when you put in your information, your information, your debt, your years of residency, your income as a resident, your income as an attending physician, household size, then the MedLoans Organizer and Calculator will answer those questions for you. It will tell you, what are your payments during residency? What are your payments as an attending physician? So that's what that will do. Now, we will dive into that at a webinar in April. So for any of you who are looking for that kind of information, in April, we will have a repayment strategies webinar where we will have med, an MLOC, our MedLoans Organizer and Calculator. We will have a demo. So if these are questions that you want to know, please attend that. So then you can look at that and, we'll, and then we will have someone talk about the subsidy of save because that seems to be a question here, right? Um, 
So definitely something that you'd want to attend to answer questions about that. Um, so are there any PSLF calculators available for us to calculate based on our debt? Um, so MLOC does that as well, right? So if you if you go into the Medlands Organizer and Calculator, it's going to show you based on your um, amount of debt, whichever payment plan you go into, how much is actually forgiven in the public service loan forgiveness plan. Because remember, PSLF is not a payment plan. It's a program. Use MLOC. That's what we're talking about, about organizing your student loans, because I see a lot of questions are coming up about student loans and payments. Use MLOC. That's what we tell you to go into and look at, right? So definitely, definitely think about that. Um, will this guide be available to the public without having to log into the... Yeah, so you can go to the AAMC's web uh, page right now, and you can actually see this information. It's just on our first website. So you can go into that and actually dive in. When it comes to the MLOC, you do have to set up an account. So that's a little bit different. But this information and the guide, these are inf this is all information that you can, you can uh, um, get to right now. So just want to make sure we got to some of those real quickly. So um, again, different sections on budgeting, because this is living on a stipend. That's a very, very, very important um, uh, maybe concern that a lot of people have is living on a uh, resident stipend. So again, basic budgeting tips. We have things about that in here as well. Benefits of budgeting, how to set up a budget. There's links going to be to our financial wellness program. Um, you're going to see plenty of different things that talk to you about how you total your monthly expenses. Look at basically budgeting 101, income minus expenses, whatever's left over is discretionary income. So we think about things like that. Um, there's special considerations for med students um, and residents living on your cost of attendance as a medical school student. Definitely stuff to consider. I mentioned earlier about residents, whether you're in a student loan payment, maybe you don't want to be, maybe you're concerned you can't make those payments. Look, here are links right here. Postponing loan payment, grace, deferment, forbearance, different payment options. We have those all throughout this entire guide and our website. And this guide, as you probably already noticed in this brief demo, is really where everything just funnels into. This shows you all of our, not all, but most of our resources, and especially these pertaining to this particular situation, transitioning into residency or as a current resident. We have budgeting tips, cost-saving measures, talking about different things that you can do if finances and budgeting is a real concern for you, or you're just wanting to prepare for it. So definitely take advantage of this resource as well, because this budget, budgeting basics and tips is outside of the, the guide, but obviously our guide links to it because we want you to be able to just get there like that. If this is your question and this is what you wanna focus on, go for it. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Another thing we have is uh, tip cards. Uh, we have tips during residency, easing into residency, um, how you can manage your finances, how you can have debt management and how that relies on good record keeping. That's really, really important for those of you who are gonna have a loan payment that you're gonna be concerned about creating a budget, determining your housing needs. That's really, really important for you. We have links about home financing for graduating students and or residents. You can look at that. Um, we have sections on renting, advantages, disadvantages. We have sections on buying, advantages, disadvantages. All of these different things are in here. Even on managing your time, talking about a healthy work and life balance, because that also is going to be really, really dependent on how well you're managing your finances. So you want to take care of that. We referenced the MLOC a number of times, as well as the AAMC financial wellness, um, which we want to make sure everybody takes advantage of here too. And not even to be done just yet, uh, we have a budgeting worksheet for residents. We have resources about living on a resident stipend that is even a separate resource. Here you could see, this is the graphic I believe I was asked about earlier. Um, where you have living on a residence budget. This is talking about what your adjusted gross income is, how much money actually hits your account um, from that gross income versus your net. And then even looking at what's coming out of your budget. If your student loans are $250, and let's say you're bringing in $4,200 a month, here's what's coming out. Rent, health insurance, student loans, all of these different things. So this graphic can really help you start on putting that budget together. And we link you right to it from the guide. We also link you to a budgeting worksheet. 
Both of these are PDFs. You can download them, you can print them out. Some people use them as bookmarks. So whatever it is you wanna do with these resources, please do, because these are great resources that are available to you. And you don't have to look for them by name. Go to the guide. If your focus is on budget, living on a stipend, all of these things are found in the guide. So definitely take advantage of the organization there. Now, let's just say as a resident or even a medical school student, your concern is credit cards, credit scores, and identity theft, right? You're not overly focused. You've already organized your loans, or maybe you don't have loans, whatever it is. Look how many different great resources we have and how much wonderful information is available in the guide when it comes to these, these topics, credit cards. We're talking to you about how important it is to start focusing on your credit right away, particularly as a resident, right? Because you're going to start to think about bigger purchases pretty soon. You're, if you're close to the end of your residency, car, home, increasing your family size, so many things. Click on a link if used irresponsibly. What happens? How do you take control of your credit card debt? So many different pieces of advice, uh, ways you can kind of signal yourself if you're headed into trouble, if you're overspending, uh, not leaving yourself a cushion. And what if you do that? What if you do get into credit card debt a little bit more than you need to? We also have ways to help you fix that problem. We give you some advice, some resources on that, how you can try to help yourself out. Look down here. We even have a Credit 101 fact sheet that has more details. So you can dive into that, look at more information about it. And also how you can consider other options. If you're still in medical school, of course, talk to your financial aid administrator. They work with students that are in this situation. That's why they're there. They work with students who are focused on finances. Maybe they're struggling a little bit. But we also have things about credit card rules. And we make sure to link you to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. If there's something that you need to report, um, if you feel there's something going on there, we try to help you with that. We show you where there's some approved credit counseling agencies. So many different things, even outside our wheelhouse, folks that we're trying to make sure you have access to in the event that you have questions about these particular things. Identity theft, that's another one that every single one of us has to be concerned about, all of us, not just medical school students, financial aid administrators, residents, all of us, even at the AMC. We have to focus on making sure we're very, very careful with our identity. We wanna make sure we know what identity theft is, and we wanna make sure that we're doing what we can to protect it. We have an entire section devoted to identity theft protection. This section is going to help you read through some guides on guarding your social security number. How What's the best way of doing that? How to check your credit report. We have a link here to annualcreditreport.com. Check that. If you're concerned something's going on with your credit and you think there might be something that's not really where it should be, check your credit report. You can absolutely do that. Click on that. We're telling you how to monitor other accounts, okay? This will help you knowing when your bills are due. All sorts of different ways you could stay safe online. We have here a list of things you could do to do that, such as installing firewalls, being careful with your emails, things we all know to do, right? But at the same time, it's good to have these reminders. And if you're somebody who's been in medical school and you're going into residency or you're a resident now and you just haven't really thought about it much, that's what these resources are here for you to do. Look at them, reference these resources, look at these things and think, well, am I actually doing this? Am I using a, a password protector? Am I making sure I'm using strong passwords? Have I installed up-to-dated firewalls um, on my software? So make sure you're doing that. Know these signs of identity theft. That's gonna be very, very important as well. And remember, identity theft is a lot worse than having a credit card number stolen. There's a big difference there. And we talk about that. If someone steals your credit card number, Typically speaking, you can have that card canceled and you get reimbursed for things. If somebody steals your identity, that's a lot worse. Now, that's another webinar that we could go into. I'm not going to waste too much time on that. But it's just important to know the difference between those two things and how important and in-depth doing these things are and monitoring them. Your credit score also. Everyone needs to make sure you have a good credit score. That's going to be important when you go to apply for that first mortgage. For any of you who don't have a car right now, if you need to do so as a resident, uh, if you're a resident and you're thinking of doing so, if there's financial aid administrators out there and you're thinking about buying a new car, hey, look at things like this. Look at these resources where the credit score is. I'm going to talk to you about how 
can help you make purchases as an attending physician. We even break down what a credit score means, right? Like what is in, what, what does a credit score entail? Payment history, amounts owed. We break it down for you and how you would actually know what a credit score is, right? Resources, we're going to link you to the AAMC Financial Wellness Program where you can assess identity theft, credit history, your actual financial wellness. I mentioned Credit 101. This is a fact section where you could talk about understanding credit. Like I said, credit reports. We've got links all over the place where you could see what all of these things are, um, what improves a credit, what hurts a credit. There's so many different things out here talking about the benefits of good credit. So take advantage of those. Another couple of things we have, I'm not going to click on these links because first you'll have to hear me talk a little bit more up front um, because they are videos, but we have two videos. One of them is a recording through our staff that is about monitoring, maintaining, and improving your credit score. Another link is actually a webinar that we just did last fall. Um, we did that with a, a lady from Experian. Uh, she actually sat and did a Q&A. That was a new type of webinar. It was just very interactive where we just let people ask her questions. And she answered those questions live in that chat. So it's an hour long. People asked all sorts of different questions about credit, credit score, credit history, um, all sorts of things about credit. And she's the expert. So that's why we brought her in. Click on this link. Listen to that video. It's just an hour long. Um, take some time to do that. Because again, if credit um, credit cards, credit score, identity theft is something that's concerned a concern for you, or you just want to know more about it, we have that section for you. We also, of course, make sure to put a section here about our financial wellness. This, of course, has its own standalone section on the first uh, AAMC homepage, but we just have to make sure we let everybody know what a great, great program it is. Um, it's going to give you so many different things you could do as far as completing online courses, um, financial health. And you can also see in this page as well, it's going to be links about disability insurance. For those of you going into residency and especially looking at becoming an attending physician, you need to know about these things. You need to know about d disability insurance. What is it? Why is it important? Short versus long term. So much information there that's going to help all of you out when you're just progressing along in your medical education career. So take advantage of that. Tax benefits for education, we've got information on that too. If you're making payments on your student loans, you may qualify for a student loan interest deduction. Some of you may not have known that, but if you're going into residency or maybe you're just thinking you're a resident right now, you want to start making loan payments and you might have thought at one point, what's the effects on my taxes? Well, guess what? There's a section right here and we have a link to our resource that shows you information, IRS publication 970, student loan interest deduction. We talk about that, how you receive this form, this 1098 e form from your servicer, lifetime learning tax credits, so many different things that we have on taxes. In addition to that, for those of you who have already signed up for our first webinar series in the next few months, you will have noticed in March, we will have a first webinar where we're hosting someone that actually comes in and talks about filing taxes as a medical school student. So definitely, definitely listen in on that. Register for that today if this is something you're focused on. And selecting a financial planner. Some people need some help in this area. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and even if you don't think you need help, having a financial planner can be financially um, responsible and beneficial for everybody. We have information on that. What do they do? Um, know what you want. How do you get started? Knowing about how you need to ask about their credentials. If they're a CFP, Certified Financial Planner, look at all of this information, checking background, um, how to locate financial planners, so many different things for all of you to take advantage of there. And then finally, at the end of residency, the section we have is additional steps to take. So we want to sort of lay out for you what you want to think about when it comes to beginning residency annually, and even if you change employers. So what can that do? Well, obviously, that will affect your student loan payment. So we talk about what that might do if you're thinking about public service loan forgiveness. We talk about Mohila because that is the service or the process as PSLF borrowers. We talk about what you might want to look at before the end of your six-month grace. So for those of you who are just starting residency, you've got six months after graduation. Again, remember to look at repayment plans. Know what a grace period is, right? Annually, what do you do? 
you have to think about it. If you're enrolled in a direct in an income driven plan, you've got to certify your income every year. What if things changes with your income? What if things change with your household size? This section will also help you with that. We give you links for that. We tell you what steps you might want to take. And just a little final thought, just about how residency is a challenging time. It's obviously very rewarding, but it's challenging. All of you are going to be super busy. So we're trying to put something together that is easy for you to navigate with a bunch of resources and a bunch of data that can help you figure out what your next steps actually are when it comes to either the transition to residency or continuing residency with all of these different aspects, finances, budgeting, credits, loan repayments, just anything you could possibly imagine. So in a nutshell, that is a layout of the residency section um, of our guide to money management and student loans. So that's what we have for that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing that. I'm gonna go back to our guide real quickly. Um, make sure my team can, uh, current slide. Okay, so somebody on my team, can we see my slide deck okay? Making sure I transitioned over on that one. Yes, we can see your slide. Great, I've only canceled out one window so far. I'm doing good. Okay, so just in addition to that, I wanted to take some time to make sure I do go through some additional resources, which many of them were shown just now on the, the guide, but I wanna make sure we do that. Here, I had mentioned the budgeting worksheet. There were links to this throughout the guide probably two to three times. Make sure you take advantage of things like this. Living on that stipend is a challenge for a lot of people. Take advantage of this. We also have a section called Next Steps for graduating medical school students, but this is also extremely helpful for current residents because as you can see, there's sections before graduation, after graduation, but then also at the beginning of residency, before the end of your six month grace or post enrollment and annually. So for anybody who's a current resident, you wanna know what steps you might need to take for recertifying your, your income or getting into that loan repayment plan for the first time. Since again, loan repayments were kicked back in in October. So some of you might still be looking to get that up and going. So definitely take advantage of something like this. You could find that um, on the first website. This is our tip cards that we have available. These are our tips during residency. Um, on the left, the front of the card, of course, does have a lot of information about managing your student loans. But as I said earlier, we have plenty of information on just managing your money, developing that spending plan, keeping track of your credit scores, making sure you're properly insured. That's very important. And also thinking about things like retirement and investment and planning. These are things you could do right now. You do not have to wait until you're an attending physician to do that. So these are other resources we have available for you that you can find even outside um, of our guide, even though there are links in the guide to practically all of these things. And then there are also plenty of fact sheets available um, that are fact sheets on residency. The, the section on prepping for residency, these are just three of the top on the page the cost of applying for medical residency, the cost of interviewing for residency, easing into residency, transition tips. A lot of these things are still relevant for those of you who are current resident because they're still financial tips. They're giving you ways to uh, obtain your financial goals because depending on where you are, you might be looking at going to loan repayment for the first time. You might be looking at, at, at a big purchase for the first time. So there's plenty of resources available um, for all of you out there, no matter what situation you're in, whether you're graduating med school student, um, going into residency, or you're a current resident. I did mention the financial uh, wellness program already. Uh, just one more time, I promise, just the importance of it, setting up an account so that you can do things like interactive exercises. There's a full-on curriculum in the financial wellness program that all of you can sign up and do. This is great for everybody. It's got It's got real time, essentially budgeting tools where you put in your budget. Let's say you want to spend $500 a month on groceries. You put in what you spend and it'll keep letting you know when you get close to the end of that budget, right? So just little things like that can be helpful. But again, not only tracking your expenses, but developing a spending plan, creating financial goals, and of course, credit, identity theft, uh, credit scores, and just making sure that you stay on top of all of that. I'd also mentioned a couple of times about our first webinar series. These are the things that we've already had, which have been posted, like improving and monitoring credit, 
We've had a, um, a, a great turnout for our public service loan forgiveness um, webinar, financial literacy. Um, we had a colleague actually do a demo similar to this one. She probably did a much better job than me, um, but did a financial literacy demo showing everybody how great that is. And look what's coming up. Home financing and renting for med students, filing taxes, repayment strategies, choosing insurance. So many things are coming up with the webinar series. All of those are already posted on our website. Go register for them and you will get notifications when they're coming up. We'll notify you, I believe, about a week in advance, 24 hours in advance to say, hey, the webinar you registered for is coming up. So definitely take advantage of those 